Hello and welcome to the Duolingo English test. We're excited to be a part of the Canadian Association for Graduate Studies uh, virtual conference this year. Um, and I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about the Duolingo English test. Uh, my name is Sam Fleischman. I am the Canadian University Engagement Manager for the Duolingo English test. My background is as a school counselor in Hong Kong and Singapore, where I lived for nearly 14 years before joining um, Duolingo in order to help grow awareness, not just in Canada, but also Australia, the UK and, and the world, um, not just for school counselors, but agents, educational consultants um, and students who are interested in pursuing higher education. I will be joined today by a video um, from Jennifer Spire from Carnegie Mellon University, Sheila Walsh from Lakehead University, and Marie V. Walker from Florida Tech. Uh, the agenda today will be, I will give a, a quick introduction on the Duolingo English test, uh, Florida Tech's video, Lakehead's video, and Carnegie Mellon's video. Uh, and then I will follow it up with some statistics and continuing research that we're doing at Duolingo and uh, leave plenty of time for questions in that I will give you ways to contact us for questions and answers. Uh, to speak a little bit about international education today, this slide, it, these next two slides are about how Duolingo responded during the pandemic, but we were in a position to respond to the pandemic um, because of our test and the way it was developed and why it was developed. So I'm going to get into that a little bit today. The next two slides, while COVID specific and lockdown specific, um, they that only heightened um, some of the inequities that were caused in the pursuit of higher education um, before the pandemic um, highlighted that. So for instance, um, many students around the world have always had issues with app completion. There's been economic distress, travel restrictions um, to obtain um, an English language test or another standardized test or travel restrictions on which countries they can go to and when they can go to or personal matters that make it difficult to travel in different uh, times. But also visas um, were, were heightened and, and affected a lot more during the COVID uh, 2020, 2021. We're still ongoing um, concerns and processes in place to make sure that students will be safe while pursuing their, their dreams of higher education. Um, so while we were hearing this pre-pandemic and especially during pandemic, we responded uh, in the same way that we had been responding through offering an English language test that was available to all uh, around the world in a timely and affordable way. Uh, what we saw was that from January 1st until today, more than 2,500 institutions have begun using the test that were not using the test before the pandemic. We were operating in more than 50 countries before the pandemic, but currently we're operating in more than 75 countries, 75 countries that accept the test in some way, shape, or form, whether that be a business or a secondary school or a university undergraduate or postgraduate. We also have seen a huge increase in test taker volumes from, from key countries. Um, this is in large part because for a good portion of 2020, we were the only English language test available for students to take. Uh, and thus when universities needed proof of English proficiency, um, the Duolingo English test was the resource that students were directed to. Why, why is that and why were we equipped and in a place to be able to provide support to students and universities. Um, and that gets back into our test background a little bit. We, we did, were developed over seven years ago. Um, and before uh, a university began to accept us, we did two years of research and development and did beta testing. Um, we started out at universities in the United States and businesses around the world. Um, and we decided about six years ago, five, five, six years ago, to really focus in on higher education, both undergraduate and graduate in the United States, um, with some involvement in the UK and Canada and around the world. Um, we are the only test to use AI from end to end. That means that from the beginning of the test until the end of the test, when that result gets shared with you as an institution, um, AI has been, has been in the process the whole time. 
But we also talk about human in the loop AI. AI never operates independently within the Duolingo English test, and there's always humans um, there, um, specifically in our, in our multi-tier human proctoring efforts. No test is validated until it's gone through artificial intelligence prevention and detection, and then also human proctoring detection as well. We'll get more into that a little bit later. Um, part of the reason that we operated seven years ago uh, as a test uh, is built from our mission and we live out our mission. It permeates through all aspects of our company uh, and, and our, our employees. Uh, and the, the mission really drives what we do so that students around the world can not just um, learn a language, whatever language it is that they might want to learn on the Duolingo platform, but also be able to use the Duolingo English test to further lower barriers as they want to increase their opportunities to university. And so the Duolingo English test, we use assessment technology, which I'm gonna get into a little bit, to lower these barriers um, and hopefully increase opportunities for English language learners everywhere. Specifically, once they obtain a university degree, um, we know that the life, uh, their life, but the lives of their families and generations to come are, are better. And uh, that stems right from our CEO who lives and breathes our mission so wholeheartedly is Luis Van Aan. Um, he's Duolingo's co-founder and CEO. He was born and raised in Guatemala. He actually um, took an English language test in the 90s in order to go to university, but he could not get a test in Guatemala. He had to fly to neighboring country El Salvador in the 90s to take his English language test to go to university. Um, lucky for all of us that he did, he, he went to university, he continued on to graduate school, um, and while a grad student, he invented CAPTCHA, um, which helps to prove you're not a robot on the internet. Um, later on, then he created ReCAPTCHA, which helps to digitize books um, all around the world as humans with AI and that integration, human in the loop, um, are helping to educate the world um, and make the world a safe, safer place. Um, he was a Carnegie Mellon professor um, as well of computer science, and he has earned um, a Mark Arthur Fellow and a MIT recipient. He's a fascinating man. I encourage you to, to check out his TED Talks on how he built Duolingo and, and why. And it is that mission that lives throughout everything we do. So our mission in action Specifically with in regard to English language tests, if you look at the world map of test centers per million people, you'll see that there's not a lot of test centers in, in places per million people. Um, but where they are is in Canada, where you all are, uh, Australia, um, the Middle East, and the United States uh, kind of pop in terms of where test centers are. A lot of places where English is already predominantly spoken. Um, whereas when you look at Duolingo test takers per million people, you see that we're able to encompass the world a lot more because there's internet penetration um, throughout the, the globe, much more than there is test center availability. And the mission to make sure that English language testing center opportunities are there for students means that the test center can be in a student's own bedroom by themselves. Um, and thus more students can take the test without having to travel to another country or without having to even travel within their city. Um, and so we're saving students a lot of time. And what has been the outcome of that is that hundreds of thousands of students have been taking the Duolingo English test. In fact, they've come from over 207 countries and their diversity is um, mentioned here within the 144 first languages that our test takers speak. Um, our Industry Insights is a blog that we highlighted all of the different programs, but specifically undergraduate and graduate programs and where our test takers were coming from. You'll see the graduate programs in Canada um, over the last year, Iran and India um, have been our number one in two um, countries represented. Uh, I have some more updated statistics at the end of this presentation. 
you'll also see that our, um, our mission is in action through the way that we provide free tests to any student who is high achieving, meaning they can do the university work, but they're low income. Um, and we've provided over 10,000 fee waivers um, to date to help students um, take an English language test for free in order to show a university that they are able to fulfill and do the work at the university. We've also been commissioned from the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, to uh, support the Northern Triangle, specifically countries of Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras with free um, language tests, but also access to the Duolingo language learning app. In addition, our last little piece of opportunity through education and living out our mission is that we have partnered with the UN um, Refugee Agency uh, to establish a college counseling program, which will support refugees pursuing higher education. Uh, it's a program that's the first of its kind. Um, it was just publicized um, this last week on our social media platform. And um, I encourage you, if you have anybody in your, in your life or in your industry that you think would be a great advocate for refugees continuing their education. Uh, and if they're open to work and they're open to looking for a new opportunity, um, I encourage you to, um, to send along this information to them as well. I'm gonna go over the test overview real quick. Um, the Duolingo English test is accessible. Uh, it is available around the world as highlighted earlier, and it is just 49 US dollars. Um, no matter where you are in the world, that's the cost. It is comprehensive. It is speaking, writing, reading, and listening. And when a student takes the test, they get their scores, they get a video interview and a writing sample. They get their overall score and they get their um, literacy score, a comprehension score, a conversation score, and a production score, which are integrated from the speaking, writing, reading, and listening. The test is fast. The test is under an hour in length and students will get their certified results within two days, meaning that they'll be able to send their results to the institution within two days of taking the test. Um, all of that happens in a reliable way that our research has supported that universities can use the Duolingo English test to make high stakes decisions about their applicants. The security of the Duolingo English test is done through prevention and detection both with artificial intelligence and multiple rounds of human proctoring. Um, we're locking down aspects of the computer. It's an adaptive test, which, which helps to speed up the test and at the same time hone in on that student's skills in such a way that when they deviate from that skill that they've been able to produce in a test, um, it triggers both our artificial intelligence and our human proctors that are, that are ESL trained. Um, our security, we have a whole webinar um, recording on it. So if you are more interested in security or in research, um, please reach out and I'll send out the webinars to you that are most appropriate for what you're interested in. Um, for those of you who don't know maybe as much about a computer adaptive test, what we do here is that we are supporting um, this, the speed of a test, which is important for students with low internet um, availability around the world. The faster that they can take um, an English language proficiency test from the comfort of their own home um, and get the results, um, it is better for them, but it's also um, less strenuous on their internet qubit, um, consumption. Uh, but the computer adaptive test is, is wonderful for a lot of other reasons as well. One is that we can really hone in on their skill from a Cepher range of A1 to C2. We're able to do that in about 45 minutes through the different item types that we have. And what we've done is we've incorporated speaking, writing, reading, and listening, and we've integrated them into different item types. And so for the first you know, 10 or so minutes of the test, they're getting ramped up and down based off of how they score to find out what the likely English proficiency is. And then we're gonna spend the rest of that 30 minutes, 45 minutes to really ensure that that is their English language proficiency by challenging them throughout the test. Um, and all of this is done through our computer adaptive testing technology. Um, 
I mentioned earlier that AI is end to end. And so how were our items developed is we actually took expert annotated Cepher texts and word lists, and we incorporated them into some statistical models for Cepher difficulty estimation. This is a very common thing. This is not just a Duolingo English test thing. Um, we also then incorporated natural English language sources and created uh, item generation techniques and some unique items to um, to highlight and to use within our test. We, we then take these statistical models and these item generation techniques, and we create a very large pool of Cephal aligned items that can be administered in the computer adaptive test. Um, this is cool because the, the pool of items is so large and vast that there has never been a repeated full test, meaning there have never been of the hundreds of thousands of test takers um, a test that was the exact same test another person took. And that is because our item types are so big, but also the computer adaptive portion of it. Students don't always get the same thing right all the time, which means it doesn't always lead to the same item pool to where the next item comes from. Um, it's very interesting. We have a whole webinar on that if you'd be more interested in learning more about our item development. Um, Another aspect of our test, which is a little different, and I mentioned it earlier, is our subscores that we have actually created from the speaking, writing, reading, listening um, skills that are more um, commonplace, meaning it's the reading and the writing. It's that literacy ability. We're combining those skills, but also the writing and the speaking, the, the ability to produce something in a different language. So in English specifically, the production skill, which is very difficult to establish because it involves a lot of confidence as well to be able to write and speak in that new language. Um, and so we've integrated all of these skills um, in the test and we've integrated the scores for the reports that you will see from your students. Um, to go real quickly through the accessibility um, of the test, the test taker journey that has not really changed. Students need to take an English language test. They book a date. They travel to a test center. Well, this is the way it's traditionally worked, and they take a three-hour long test in that test center. Um, the Duolingo difference is that the student still needs to take that test, but they can take the test anytime, any day that they'd like, and they can test anywhere that has internet access in the computer. They onboard with an ID and their face. We do some scanning of this. They have to follow all the test requirements and rules. Um, and then they go through the computer adaptive section of the test, which is scored. Uh, and then they get to the very end of the test and they have a video interview and a writing sample, which is not scored, but it is reviewed and it is proctored still. Um, the difficulty of these prompts is selected from the score that they obtained on the computer adaptive section of the test. The video interview and the writing sample are also shared to universities when the student shares their test score. The whole process looks like this. The testing takes about 60 minutes. The proctoring takes about two days. The sharing is on demand, meaning students, once they get their results, they're able to share it with any institution for free. Other, other tests have charged traditionally um, anywhere from 10 to, to $30 to, uh, to send scores. And, and we do that all for free as an unlimited amount of times. And then students and universities can review the results at any time via the dashboard, which you will hear about later as well. If you are interested in receiving results, if you would like to become an accepting institution of the Duolingo English test and joining um, dozens to a hundred other institutions in Canada, the process is quite simple. It's easy and it's fast and it's free. It takes about two minutes to go to go.duolingo.com slash accept, fill out the form and you'll receive dashboard access and you will be live on our website so students can start sharing their scores with your institution. Um, you'll receive a getting started guide, some information on how to integrate it into your system um, and some additional team resources or trainings if needed. Now you're going to hear from three institutions that do accept the the Duolingo English test. Um, you're also going to hear about how their um, university operates a little bit and why they use the Duolingo English test. First up will be Florida State. Marie V. Walker will speak to you now. 
Hi, thank you so much for inviting me, Sam. I absolutely love um, presenting with anyone from Duolingo because I'm a big fan of the company. My name is Marie V. Walker and I'm currently the Associate Director for Graduate Admissions at Florida Tech. Um, I thought it would be interesting for you first to know a little bit about me and our university before continuing on and talking about our relationship with Duolingo. I have been with the university since 2011. Um, up until 2020, I was the associate director, excuse me, the assistant director for international big deal and quite important to us. Since 2020, I was promoted to um, my current position and I oversee all of domestic and international graduate admissions. The way our office works is there's um, several um, admissions counselors or, and recruiters, and we are pretty much the first read. Um, for the international students who apply, we determine GPA, we determine English language proficiency, et cetera, and then we pass it on to committee review. We do utilize Slate, which is just wonderful, but that's another story. Um, so that is how our admissions office works. A little bit about Florida Tech. Um, I think for those of you who are not familiar with the university, um, we are located in Brevard County, Melbourne, Florida, and um, just south of the Kennedy Space Center. We were founded in 1958. It was a doctoral granting university, and pretty much it was founded um, by physicists and scientists up at the Cape, at the Kennedy Space Center, um, to offer advanced degrees to the folks working um, at the dawn of the space race. So at the time it was called Brevard Engineering College and um, very exciting because it was definitely part of that excitement of the, you know, getting up into space and, and definitely Florida Tech had its little part of that. We've grown significantly since then. Um, we now have four colleges, but this kind of gives you a little bit of a feel of what our campus looks like. Um, 2000 graduate students and about 3000 undergrad students. We are known as Florida STEM University, basically because um, at the undergrad level, I know we're, this is grad, but at the undergrad level, students come in directly into their major. They're expected to engage in three and a half years of research and internships in low in Brevard County. Um, so it's very different than other universities where students have to do um, general education and liberal arts and then apply to their majors here. No, they are directly into their majors and that goes for both domestic and international. So moving along, like I said, four colleges, aeronautics, business, engineering, science, and psych and liberal arts. Engineering and science is obviously our flagship. Um, College of Psychology, we have some incredibly strong programs in clinical psychology, behavior analysis, applied behavior analysis, industrial organization, um, and that sort of thing. College of Aeronautics um, is, is what it is. Most of our graduate programs are online because they're for the working professional. At the undergrad level, you know, we do flight training all the way to commercial pilot's license, and we are the only university that I'm aware of in the United States that's both FAA and EASA, which is the European counterpart, um, certified. So exciting there. A uh, picture of our flight line, the different programs that we offer. Like I said, engineering and science is definitely our stronghold. Um, different programs in psychology, college of business. And then we're all about research at, at Florida Tech. Um, this gives you an idea of the companies that are located here. Brevard County is the fourth, probably third largest um, high-tech corridor in North America. Whereas Silicon Valley is very much um, computer and app type of engineering, we are more mechanical, electrical, computer science, software engineering, aerospace. Um, companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, Collins Aerospace, you know, these, these are all big giants in, in engineering and they all have a presence here and we're very much um, affiliated with them. Um, you know, Northrop Grumman and L3 Harris is, is a big um, partner of ours in, in many different ways for the students and whatnot. And, um, I guess I need to stop sharing my screen and talk a little bit about um, Duolingo and Florida Tech. I think Florida Tech signed up with Duolingo actually pretty early on. Um, I was personally invited to Pittsburgh 
um, to the offices back, I think it was 2018, we had heard about uh, Duolingo, but could not really get our faculty to, um, to agree to utilize the test. So I think what Duolingo did, which was to invite a lot of us to their campus to show us how they worked was, was just was groundbreaking. And also many of my colleagues on my side of the desk and on the other side of the desk can actually transition to go work for Duolingo. So I trusted them as professionals and seeing how they made the move to the company, I thought, hmm, there's, some, there's something about this. Um, after going and seeing what was happening in that organization, from how it was founded to, to, to all the backend security, um, to how the, the key proponent for them was to make this an accessible test for everybody. Um, I, I personally was just was sold, especially when it came to security. When I saw the people that were hired to make sure that um, there was no fraud um, when students took the test and, and how they went about that, it, it, it was just mind blowing, to be honest with you. And so brought it back to campus um, gave a presentation, and I think I pretty much convinced the English department to, okay, let, let's let's try this out. And initially, this I'm talking now at the undergrad level, initially, it was only with the College of Business, um, because they signed on first. And so this is probably like March. Um, fast forward to summer, and of course, as always, you know, we had our, our coaches calling last minute saying, oh, I've got this great recruit, you know, need to get him in, blah, blah, blah. Um, and English was an issue. This specifically was for three of our rowers, part of our crew team. And they were from Spain and Greece, and they were competing in the European Championship. So they really had no way to go sign up for a testing center um, to get, you know, to take the test. So I said, OK, this is it. So we had them sign up with Duolingo. They did it wherever it was that they were at the moment on their laptop, got the results back. Everything worked out perfectly. They enrolled. And that was the beginning of our journey with Duolingo. As it is right now, um, we have been enrolling students who have demonstrated English language proficiency at the undergrad and at the grad level since 2018. I can tell you that we have absolutely zero complaints from any one of our departments or professors as to um, the English language abilities of any of our students who were admitted um, with this test. So you know, um, Florida Tech admits based on academics, and then a student has to demonstrate English language proficiency for um, immigration document issuance. And they can do that multiple ways. We always recommend Duolingo. It's, it's inexpensive. We get the results immediately. And for me, anytime I have a problem, the team is always there. You email them, they answer right back, they help you out right away. It is, the customer service is phenomenal. Um, I, I just can't say enough good things. They, they make my life incredibly easy. So, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's the way to go. And like I said, we are a STEM university. We admit students into very complex programs. Um, you know, aerospace engineering, information assurance and cybersecurity and computer engineering and whatnot. And like I said, they've come in with the test and they have been incredibly successful. No issues what, whatsoever. And so we, we, we plan on just um, increasing and pushing um, this test with our international students forever, as far as I'm concerned. So if anyone has any questions, they're more than welcome to reach out to me directly. Sam can always share um, my contact information with you. I think we have provided some data to Duolingo to help them share as far as, you know, how have students who have enrolled performed throughout their graduate career and, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, but other than that, um, I... I I, I just, I love the organization. I think the people who they have hired are amazing. They're definitely, definitely on the cutting edge. Customer service is, is second to none and they make it easy for our international students. And that's, for me, that's, that's just critical. 
So thank you so much. Hi, thank you. All right, so that was Marie V. Walker. And now you're gonna hear from Lakehead University. Uh, hi, thank you, Sam, for inviting me to speak about Lakehead University's experience using the Duolingo English test. I'm just going to share my screen here. Here we go. First, a little bit about us. I'm recording this presentation today from the Center for Advanced Studies in Engineering and Sciences at the uh, Thunder Bay campus of Lakey University. Um, this facility opened in 2018 and is home to the Faculty of Graduate Studies, the Office of Research Services, and seven leading research laboratories. We also have a graduate student lounge and patio where our graduate students can study, collaborate, and socialize. The Thunder Bay campus is situated on the, in the heart of Canada on the north shore of Lake Superior. We have a population of 111,000. And while Thunder Bay is home to fantastic students and researchers, it is also the number one city in Canada per capita for producing NHL players. It's hockey season, so I just had to fill that in there. Um, our Aurelia really campus is nestled on the shores of Lake Puchuching and Lake Simcoe near the greater Toronto area. Aurelia is a vibrant community of over 30,000 and is home to a number, a select number of our graduate programs. Um, Lincoln University offers a diverse selection of graduate programs at the master's and PhD level. I'll just provide a brief overview of the structure of our graduate office and explain how we process applications. Uh, the Faculty of Graduate Studies is headed by our Dean, Dr. Chandra Shahi. Our manager is Trish Dalkolowski. Our admissions officers are Sharice Clark and Susan White. Uh, our international clerk is Taylor Lawton. Our administrative assistant is Sarah DeBaggio, and I'm the administrative clerk. So we collect the online applications for all of our graduate programs at the PhD and master's level. Um, our, application, or our applicants use the online portal to complete their application and upload all of their unofficial supporting documents and monitor the status of their applications. Our admissions officers perform an initial assessment and then forward the applications on to each academic unit for review, admission decisions, and funding allocations. Once they've made their decisions, they send them back to us for processing. If an applicant is admitted, we'll send them an offer of admission uh, requesting the official documents at that time. For our international students, of course, once they meet uh, their conditions, we will issue them an unconditional letter that they can use to apply for their study permit. Um, graduate Studies works closely with our fantastic Lakehead International recruitment team to reach uh, potential applicants in many, many international markets, including, but not limited to India, China, Vietnam, the Middle East, and Mexico. It's actually one of our international recruitment team members that brought the Duolingo English test to the attention of the undergraduate and graduate admissions offices in March of 2020. When the COVID uh, pandemic forced the English language test centers to close around the world, um, they had started receiving many requests from our international applicants asking if we would accept the Duolingo test. Uh, the decision was made for all graduate and undergraduate programs to accept the Duolingo English test on an interim basis. Some of our limited enrollment programs do require a, a slightly higher minimum score, but all programs do accept the test. Uh, some of the advantages of the Duolingo English test that we've heard directly from our applicants are um, that they don't have to travel to a test uh, to a different city to take a, a test of course not every everyone has a test center in their city uh, so that's a big advantage for them the length of the test too being that it's an hour compared to some longer tests is, is something that we've heard um, and the affordability of the test being that it, it is a little bit more affordable than than some other tests um, and not only are there advantages for the applicants but also for us on the institution side as well uh, such as the great support from Duolingo. Once we began accepting the test, we were invited to uh, um, join some webinars on various topics, including the test experience for test takers, so we could see what that was like for them, the security of the test uh, behind building the test and the proctoring of the test, 
Um, and the webinars were very informative, answered a lot of our questions, and we felt confident in the process, process of online testing. Another great feature of the uh, DET is the turnaround time from when a student takes the test to us receiving the verified scores. It's usually like two days, um, and that's really helpful for the applicants who need to obtain an unconditional letter and, and apply for their study permits. Um, one of the other great advantages for the university, sorry, I moved my, uh, my slide over a little too fast, um, is knowing that our tests, our applicants are safe. They can take the test in the comfort of their own home. They don't have to travel anywhere, especially these days with, with COVID. Um, it's much safer for them to just do that at home. Okay, and one of my favorite aspects of the Duolingo test is dashboard. It is. Um, it was updated earlier this year and is very user friendly. Uh, there's a search bar that you can enter the applicant's name, first name, last name, or, or part of the name, or their email address, and uh, it finds them very quickly. Um, you can also search by email address. Um, there's filters. You can add a filter right here. If you just click on that, there's um, you can search by test date. So if you can't find somebody by their name, which doesn't usually happen, but you could search by the date that they took the test, if they know that. Um, you can also search by or filter by test uh, scores, the, um, the overall score number. Um, another feature that isn't in the screenshot, but just to the uh, right of this little view button is this little arrow and that if you click on that it opens a notes feature that we utilize to enter the Lakewood University student ID number and the date that we uploaded the test from the dashboard to our online application system. Um, we also receive a note, uh, an email notification from Duolingo when uh, a test has been released to us which is very helpful. Um, also on the web page, you can see here, is a blog button. Um, so you can check that out to see. They have various uh, articles on, uh, on a variety of topics. And not on this screen as well, but somewhere else on the website is a link to, you just press a little button, you can send an email directly to Sam and he'll get back to you right away. Um, as for our numbers, of Duolingo tests that we've received. Uh, for the fall 2020 cycle, we received 295 uh, English tests from March 2020 to September 2020. Uh, for the fall 2021 cycle, we received 274 tests. And this year, we're just starting to get a handful in for the 2022 cycle. Uh, I'm happy to report that uh, Lake University officially added Duolingo to the list of approved English tests in July of 2021, which means we'll be accepting it going forward. Uh, overall, this test is very accessible for our applicants, no matter where they are in the world. Our programs are happy with the test, and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to work with Duolingo in the future. That's all I have for today. If anybody has any questions about how Lakehead utilizes the test, uh, my email is, is on this slide there. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. So thank you again, Sam, for inviting me to speak here today. I hope you can come up and visit us in Thunder Bay sometime soon. Okay, take care. I plan on getting to Thunder Bay as soon as I can. Uh, and I'd love to connect with Lakehead University a little bit more. Sheila, as she uh, she mentioned, just email me and I will get back to you as soon as I can about any uh, any questions uh, you may have. The, the last university that we're gonna hear from today is um, Carnegie Mellon University, specifically their INI program within the College of Engineering. So here is an introduction to Carnegie Mellon, INI, and Jennifer Spire. Thanks, Sam, for inviting us to join the session. I'm here representing the Information Networking Institute at Carnegie Mellon University, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Jennifer Spire, and I am the Director of Admissions Enrollment here at the INI. 
and I am excited to be talking about Duolingo and telling you a little bit about our interaction with the product. <laughs> um, I started here about three years ago um, in admissions, really having brought um, a lot of experience from both the undergraduate admissions world and also non-traditional admissions experience. And this was my first um, time working with graduate students. And so I was really excited to, to start the process process. Um, for me personally, my approach to admissions has always been a very personalized, supportive environment where I'd like to connect one-on-one -on -one with our students and really understand the challenges that they're facing, um, you know, to admissions and really walk them through that process. And for me, one of the things that's really been very important is leveraging technology. And so right off the bat, um, I was excited to uh, use the technology that the I and I already had in place and try to identify some new options for students. And um, actually what happened was I found myself at a um, uh, NAGAP event and I ran into um, someone from Duolingo who was sitting next to me at a table and I very quickly learned about Duolingo, um, not only that it was based in Pittsburgh, obviously, and, and had come out of Carnegie Mellon, but the alternative that it offered to students um, for English proficiency. And I had learned in the short time that I'd been at the INI that, you know, um, processing the Duolingo, uh, excuse me, processing the TOEFL and the IELTS, you know, could be a barrier for some of our students. And um, so let me step back and just tell you a little bit about the population of students that we serve. So the INI is a department within the College of Engineering at Carnegie Mellon. There are 11 um, schools and college departments within the College of Engineering, and we were one of those. Um, for us and for, I think, a lot of other departments, we had a significant number of international students we have. And so um, English professors. Use Slate, which later on became really awesome um, with integrating Duolingo because they are such a seamless integration that it really worked well for our faculty when I was ready to onboard it. Um, we do offer a holistic faculty-led faculty admissions application review process. And what that means is that we bring all of, nearly all of our applications to faculty to review. Each uh, application is reviewed by two faculty members and then um, many of them are brought to a committee review for final decisions. And so while, while English proficiency certainly wasn't the main thing that we were looking for through the admissions process, it came after, um, as I think some other schools mentioned, um, it definitely is important to ensuring that our students have a successful um, and seamless experience at Carnegie Mellon um, and, and are safe and all of those things. So it's really important up to us to have an option that's, that's um, you know, reliable. <laughs> um, and so we, I went to the faculty and my department and really um, brought up the idea of implementing Duolingo. And as you can imagine, there were, there were lots of questions. Um, and so what we decided to do for the first year, which was in fall of 2020, so before the numbers that you see on this slide, um, was to just give students the option to submit Duolingo. We didn't announce it, we put it on our website, it was a soft launch and we really just hoped that you know, students would see that and be able to submit scores. We could integrate it seamlessly into the Slate CRM and faculty would see um, how easy it was, number one, to use. And then number two, we could start to compare the students who already had TOEFL and IELTS and see you know, how those scores compared for the faculty. And so that was our first step. So these numbers here represent the number of applications in the fall 2021 admission cycle. So remember, we started Duolingo in 2020 as an option for students. We went into fall 2021 the larger College of Engineering joined in. And so all of our departments opened it up as an option um, for that review process. And um, overall, we received over 500 students across the college who submitted Duolingo scores, which to me seemed 
like a good number, I wasn't sure. And, and after speaking to the folks at Duolingo, came to understand that for graduate programs that are starting to um, use the, the technology, um, this was a pretty, a pretty good start. So we felt really good about that. And what I can say is that not only did we have students using it, but I can't honestly for, I can't really remember a difficulty that a student encountered using Duolingo. Actually, there was one, there was one. Um, Duolingo is amazing, as I'm sure you'll hear through other parts of this presentation, in that um, they have so many checks and balances for um, ensuring that um, the information is valid. And so what was happening is we did have one student who was following all the protocols he thought, and it was still being flagged as, um, you know, uh, like not, not, being able to be validated. Um, but I'll be honest, within 24 hours, I reached out to my Duolingo contact. They reached out to the student. The student was able to do it again, and they didn't have to pay for the service again. So you not only do you want something that works for your students, obviously, but you also want something that when it doesn't, there's a, there's a process and a way to go. And we found that with Duolingo. So I will say that I'd say the three things that really stood out to me when I was learning about it and then later on when we implemented Duolingo was improving accessibility. I know this aligns with the company's story, <laughs> and I promise no one told me to say this, but we really, especially throughout the pandemic, obviously needed an option um, be because so many students could not um, access TOEFL. They just couldn't get to it. And so this gave our students um, in that situation a very, very easy alternative, but also students who even could access it, but for whatever reason had waited till the deadline and needed something to come in for us to review. This really allowed me to say, rather than I'm going to hold your, your application review for three weeks or four weeks or a month, what I would say to them is I have this great alternative that is affordable, that allows you to take the test 20 24 seven and also allows you to um, get this us to receive the scores within 48 hours. And so for us, that was that. So that was really great. Um, as an aside, there is a functionality that we use every once in a while called the fee, the waiver. Um, no, invitation, I think it's called, where we actually sent an invite to the students to let them know that they could log in and um, use Duolingo. And I will be, and I'm not going to necessarily talk about this now, but there's a great um, dashboard that allows both the users, um, you know, all the users, faculty, all of us to log in and see the system if it's not integrated into a CRM like Slate. So for us, that gave us multiple ways to access all the information. Um, increase in flexibility, obviously, on both the student and the user side. Um, for our faculty, it really allowed them to just be in Slate Reader and reviewing applications and um, see that information right in front of them and actually look at the video if they wanted to. Um, and then easy to use, we've talked a lot about. And I will say there, there certainly were questions. I don't mean to imply that there weren't questions about how the score um, you know, compares to um, other, other testing sites and, and all of that data is available. And so again, I know I've listened to many sessions to talk about, you know, it's really important not necessarily to convert scores from one system to another, but there's a lot of intention behind how the Duolingo scores were created. And so we've taken the time in both admissions and with our faculty to learn about that and to sort of play with a little bit the numbers. Um, I, will, I, I surveyed the faculty in advance of a session and this is one of the quotes that we heard um, from this faculty member saying it was something that I didn't even know I needed or wanted. So um, for the most part, I will say that the faculty were on board fairly quickly and we're still ramping up. Not every student is using Duolingo, but um, it's increasing every admission cycle. And for us, you know, we're, we're happy to help support um, the work in graduate education to help folks determine if this, you know, how this can be another another option for students. We're all about options for students, right? Because everyone has a reason that they want to use or not use something. So um, for me personally, it was just a great way to um, enhance this space and really 
meet students where they are in terms of getting the support and help they need to prove their English proficiency. I'll be honest, just last night, I have a student who has been studying here at Carnegie Mellon um, in the United States for um, graduate school and also his undergrad and is applying to our program. And I told him he needs um, to submit testing. And he said his testing is seven years old. And so I said, oh, you probably want to submit something that's more recent and more, more um, accurately reflects your current English proficiency and shared with him the information about Duolingo. And he's probably doing it as we speak. So that's, that's really great. <laughs> oh, I want to thank Jennifer for her uh, time and energy and explaining just the process that CMU has um, gone through to accept the Duolingo English test and, and to use it. Um, I encourage you also to learn more about INI and the work that they do in cybersecurity um, and all the different programs that they have. I'm gonna, um, go, gonna move on here to the next uh, to the next slide and just show some, some data about Canada um, specific to graduate students. Um, and so these are some results that we have um, year to date. Um, not too different from what you saw earlier, the top 10 countries that have um, been represented in our applicant um, and our test taker pool that have sent their applications to Canadian uh, graduate studies. Um, it goes from Iran um, down to Germany. Um, not much of this will probably be surprising to you as it probably makes up your application um, pool. But I did want to show this, and I also wanted to show the next slide, which is how we break it down by city. And this is important because um, while most of the cities that are going to be on this next list have test centers in them, um, not, not every city in the world has a test center, but pretty much every city in the world has access to, to high internet capabilities for an hour to take the Duolingo English test. You'll see the top 10 cities, cities represented in the last uh, in the last nine months are uh, from Hyderabad uh, and Tehran, um, and then a lot more uh, from India down from six to 10. Um, but you also have those that are already in Canada that are applying to graduate studies programs. Um, you'll also see that 80% of this pie chart is made up with other, there are over 1500 cities in which the Duolingo English test was taken and those applicants um, sent their scores to Canadian postgraduate studies um, universities. Uh, cities 11 through 20 um, open it up a little bit more with a little bit more diversity still in India, but also Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, the UAE, Uzbekistan, uh, and then London rounds out the top 20. And these are the last nine months um, where students have taken the test, which cities they've come from. The, the last slide that I'm gonna show here on data is in the past 30 days, um, postgraduate study students who have completed a test, um, these are the top 10 fields of study that they're interested in. Um, this can be broken down by country as well. So um, if you'd like some more information on that, whether it's a specific country and, and students who are interested in communication and journalism or a specific country and students are interested in computer science, math, and engineering, we can get into that a little bit more. And I'd love to have that conversation with you. Um, so this, this is just the past 30 days, and we like to keep these on a, on a rotating basis just to see if there's changes throughout the year. Lastly uh, is our Duolingo engagement, and not the engagement with universities from the admissions point of view, but engagement with um, graduate um, studies, universities for continuing research and continuing education about the Duolingo English test. Um, last year, we gave um, a doctoral dissertation award um, winner to these um, wonderful students who presented what they were doing for their doctoral dissertation, and we gave awards to, to each of them. Um, we've heard from many of them as they've pre presented to Duolingo and to the Duolingo English test team about the work that they have done. Um, in the next month or two, we will be announcing our second annual doctoral dissertation award winners. So be on the lookout in our socials and on our website to find out more about our doctoral award winners. 
Last year, we also had some Harbor Fellows um, in which these three individuals worked together with Duolingo and the Digital Harbor Foundation um, to continue to do work with, that is related to their own um, coursework, their own um, PhD aspirations, but also aligned with what Duolingo uh, works for and what the Duolingo English Test is uh, striving to do. And so if you're interested in learning more about the research grants that we have, the fellowship options that we have, um, the dissertation awards that we have, you'll want to go to our website and find out more about that. Um, and then lastly, we had uh, competitive research grant recipients. Um, these four individuals all received um, grant money to continue to do their work um, on assessing the Duolingo English test in a, in a variety of different ways. You have Okim Kong from Northern Arizona University who's doing some really cool work on how fairness um, can be established through using an online test, specifically a computer adaptive test. Um, looking at the different listening tasks within the Duolingo English test. And uh, Chen Wang from the University of Washington is evaluating some differential item functioning for the Duolingo English test. So some really cool things that are happening here um, that if you're interested, once again, our research page um, has, has some of this information. And then if you would like to get uh, added to our mailing list, please reach out and let me know. Um, we also have a technical advisory board that is guiding uh, our team throughout the creation and evaluation and continuation um, of the Duolingo English test. So these, these five individuals um, work with us quarterly to make sure that the test continues to, to do what it says it does and continues to push the envelope on, on being the best, um, the best test it can be. So we, we have some really great um, Prof professionals here, uh, and one from the University of Toronto, Eunice uh, Young, is um, so she specializes in diagnostic language assessment um, and technology learning uh, and assessment. Um, and some of her contributions to our team have been invaluable. Um, and so these individuals work with us quite regularly as well. Uh, and then lastly, I want to just show you that the, the work that we're doing is continuing and it's continuing at some of the institutions in Canada and around the world that we have commissioned some studies. We've reached out to experts in the field that are working um, in your universities um, and asking them, are you interested in doing some further study? Are you interested in um, and working with our research team to help us uh, with expanding the test, not just um, in accessibility and availability, but also in making sure that the test is robust and reliable and valid. And what we are seeing is some really cool things coming out from our linguistic characterization, characteristics of the Duolingo English test to our validity studies that are happening at universities around the world. So these are, these are forthcoming studies as well. I'm going to leave that with, uh, with you now for any questions. You can reach out to me directly at Fleischman at Duolingo.com. Um, my phone number is there as well, um, but also our institutional support and our research questions um, emails are right there. I am so grateful that you were able to, uh, to watch this. If you have any questions, please reach out at any time. I hope you guys have a great conference. <clears throat> oh, bless me. Excuse me.